This is going to be Psalms 18. So Psalms 18.1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. You see, after great victory, David knows who got him the victory. And he says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Your strength shouldn't be found in monster energy drinks or Red Bull or a th full throttle. It shouldn't be in pain pills. It shouldn't be in protein bars. It shouldn't be in exercise. It should be in God. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. David said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. And Deuteronomy 6.5 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. That's how you stay out of trouble. If you love somebody, you want to please them. If you love somebody, you want to talk to them and hear what they have to say. Do you really love the Lord? Do you really love the Lord and is he your strength? David did. Look how he describes him in Psalms 18 verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. So the Lord was his rock. Not imagine dragons, not bullet for my valentine, not ACDC, not Green Day, not Metallica, not Mudvayne, not Slipknot, not Blink-182 or the Misfits. The Lord was his rock. God was his rock. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, he was talking about himself. The, the world doesn't have the same rock as us. Deuteronomy 32, 31 says, for their rock is not as our rock. They got a different rock. They think they came from a rock, like a stone. But we know we came from a rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, who created all things. Psalms 18, 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Jesus is the rock of ages. You need to build your house on the rock. That way you have a fortress and you'll be delivered in times of trouble. Jesus sits in your high tower. He can see way out in the future. He knows what's going to happen before it happens. Psalms 18.3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. How many times do you have trouble through the day and yet you try to get through it on your own strength? Remember David said the Lord is his strength. Even little things you should call upon the Lord about those things. And a lot of people only called on the Lord when they got saved and then forgot about him after they got saved. David said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. He's really the only one worthy and soon he will get the praise that he deserves. Hebrews 3.3 3 says he was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. James 2.7 says he has a worthy name. In Revelation 4.11, they say to him, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. In Revelation 5, 9, he was the only one worthy to open the book. Revelation 5, 12 says, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. He's the only one worthy. Psalms 18, 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. God will take care of your enemies. 2 Thessalonians 1.6 says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God 
to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Many times when people talk about stealing from God, they think it's people stealing money from God. But when you try to get revenge on someone, you're stealing the Lord's vengeance. The Lord will take care of your enemies. David said in verse 3, So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Now verse 4, The sorrows of death come past me. The floods of ungodly men made me afraid. So the sorrows of death come past David. And Jonah 2, 5 says, The waters come past me about, even to the soul. The depths close round about. The weeds are wrapped about my head. Jonah was going through the same thing physically there. David said the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. David had multitudes of enemies coming out against him. And I like that picture that says the whole world is against me. It wouldn't be fair otherwise. And this is because 1 John 4, 4, If ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Romans 8, 31, shall what, shall, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Psalms 18, 5, The sorrows of hell can pass me about. The snares of death prevented me. Hell is a place of sorrow. David was a hellfire preacher. It didn't make, he didn't make it seem like it wasn't that bad. David felt as if he was going through hell on earth. I work in a freezer at work, and an older man says to new hires when they come in, Welcome to hell. And I'm thinking, you must not understand hell if you think this is hell. But I guess David knew what hell was as much as anybody who hadn't actually been to hell. He went through wars and scandals and heartbreak, and they say war is hell. David was a man of war, so the sorrows of hell can pass him about. But he says in verse 6, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Isn't it something that the Lord would pay attention to man? Here you have David, just a little nothing of a man on earth, and you have a God in heaven who opens up his ears and hears the cries of David. Psalms 8, 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? God not only hears what you're saying, but wants you to talk to him. Now, we're going to get into prophetic verses about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This even takes place after the tribulation. And at this time, he will come back with us to bring in the kingdom and wipe out the enemies of God. So verse 7, then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. So the second coming of Jesus Christ has an earthquake associated with it. And Revelation 6, 12 through 17 really gives us some good insight on the second coming of the Lord. It says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and though there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand so you see that second coming has an earthquake associated with it and these events that happened during this time is a lot worse than hollywood ever came up with the scene in the movie 2012 when all the buildings are falling over won't touch this event described in the Bible. And that verse there in Revelation 6, 17 called it the great day of his wrath. And that verse in Psalms 18, verse 7, it says, The hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. 
Jesus Christ is coming back, and boy, is he mad. Psalms 18.8 There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. When Jesus Christ comes back on a white horse, he will have something like a flamethrower coming out of his mouth. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.8 In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Joel 2.6 Before their face, the people should be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. It's going to be a scary time if you're on the receiving end. Psalms 18.9 He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. What you're messing with, if you think you can go against God, is someone that not only made the heavens, but can pick them up and just throw them. Revelation 6.14 And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Aaron of your mountain and island were moved out of their places. You're dealing with someone who has darkness under his feet. He has everything under his feet. And Ephesians 1, 21 through 22 says, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Psalms eighteen ten, And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. He, Yeah, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Sometimes the Lord does things for dramatic effect the lord doesn't need a cherub to fly he doesn't need an airplane he doesn't need that flying dog thing from the never-ending story he can fly on his own really he doesn't even have to fly he can teleport he doesn't even have to teleport because he is omnipresent but the lord does things for dramatic effect at times sometimes he asks a question and obviously he already knows the answer to it Psalms 18.10, And he rode up on a cherub and did fly. Yeah, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. So he's flying on the same wind that he made himself. The Lord made the wind. He controls the wind. Proverbs 30 and verse 4 says, Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? But this has just been a quick study through the first ten verses of Psalms 18.